Hi everyone, I'm Shane, and today I'll be walking you through the Seifu X D5 Builder Kit architecture, so let's get right into it. So first, what exactly is a Builder Kit? So the Builder Kit is for Solidity developers to go ahead and actually build uh, what we call smart modules on the Hyperverse, and what these smart modules are, are essentially packaged up smart contracts, with a JavaScript and UI layer, which allows front-end devs to actually go ahead and consume these smart modules to be able to use them throughout their dApp. So now let's go ahead and look at the SafeUX Builder Kit architecture. All right, so the first thing we'll go ahead and look at is the high-level architecture of uh, the Builder Kit. So you'll see here uh, on the docs.hyperverse.dev, if you go down to create modules, go into uh, Builder Kit, an environment setup. Uh, this is a great little diagram that shows a high level overview of how the architecture works. So uh, you can see here that we have four layers to the builder kit. So the smart contract layer, unit test, JavaScript API, and UI harness. So obviously the smart contract layer consists of your core contracts as well as some of the hyperverse contracts, which I'll get into when we uh, go ahead and look at the code. And then the unit test layer, which consists of uh, all the tests to actually uh, test out the functionality of your smart contract and make sure everything uh, works perfectly. And then the JavaScript API layer, uh, which creates the library to actually uh, help the front end devs consume and uh, use JavaScript to actually interact with your smart module and interact with the blockchain. And then the UI harness layer, which uses Storybook uh, to actually showcase uh, what is possible uh, with the uh, smart module that you just created with the builder kit. Uh, and then you can see there on the right that uh, there are multiple different smart modules. And then the one that uh, you could possibly create would be added on as a new smart module uh, to the Hyperverse Mono repo so that now front end devs can consume this and, and use them throughout their uh, dApp. So now uh, let's go ahead and look at the uh, GitHub repo. So this is where you would go if you actually wanted to go ahead and clone this. Now we do have uh, docs for this as well. So if you were to go to uh, overview or environment setup, uh, it tells you that you would go ahead and clone uh, the Hyperverse, uh, in this case, the Hyperverse Monorepo. In this case, we're using the uh, Seifu Builder Kit. So we'll go ahead and clone this, uh, which I've actually already done. Um, and this is what you'll get. So the first thing that we'll actually look at uh, is inside the contracts folder, right? So the first layer, the smart contracts uh, layer. So over here, you'll see the uh, module.sol. So this is actually the core contract. So this is where you would uh, actually update um, the, this contract and add your functionality that you would want to it. Um, and then over here in your module factory uh, .sol, this would actually contain the uh, clone factory implementation uh, of the smart module. So you would need to do a few uh, tweaks here um, just uh, in accordance to the naming convention of whatever you name uh, the module, the core functionality contract. So if you actually go here through the documentation and, and follow along, you'll actually see that um, it kind of explains it all uh, pretty much for you. So when you go to the uh, smart contracts in this docs, um, you know, it gives you um, pretty much examples of what would need to be updated on uh, either the module.sol or even the uh, module factory. Mainly it's um, you know naming conventions and stuff like that, uh, obviously with parameters and, and stuff like that. Uh, so next, we'll actually go ahead and look at the Hyperverse folder. So this contains uh, a, the clone factory.sol, uh, which enables the module factory to actually deploy clones uh, for your smart module. So this is where we're getting into uh, the composability aspect, right? Where it's actually being able to, to clone uh, these modules. And then you'll see here the I Hyperverse module. Uh, so this um, just contains the Hyperverse uh, smart module standard. So this is the interface. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much it for the smart contract layer. And now we can actually go ahead and look at the uh, unit test layer. So for that, we would actually open the test folder and then here you'll see something called module-test.js. Uh, so this is essentially uh, what house all your tests for your smart contract. So you would write the unit test uh, inside of here. And again, uh, you would just probably need to update some of the naming conventions in here. 
which is actually laid out for you uh, in the docs as well. So if you go here to uh, unit tests, you'll see right here, um, you know, update uh, this file according to um, the module name, the description, stuff like that, and obviously uh, any other tests that you would need to add. Now the third layer was the JavaScript API layer. And so for this one, it was actually in the source folder. Um, so here are a couple different files that I'll go over briefly. Um, so first the environment layer or, or this environment file. Uh, and all this is doing is that uh, it's a very simple component that will uh, just identify uh, which blockchain and network um, that your module is being used. Um, so Yep, that's pretty much all, all this is doing. Um, and if we actually go into uh, the JavaScript API um, documentation, you'll see it kind of lays everything out for you here as well. And so the second file we'll look at is this module uh, library. And so uh, this library actually contains the detailed functions that uh, read and write to the blockchain. Um, so this is very important, obviously, because these are the main functionalities that also um, will be connected and used by the front end devs. Um, so this uh, houses all the functionality that would allow uh, you to um, interact uh, with the blockchain, uh, which you can actually go ahead and see right here in the docs as well, um, that it, you know, the functions that, that read and write to the blockchain and, um, you know, give you uh, an example and, and what to, um, you know, actually do here, uh, what you can update, uh, make sure you match the file name and stuff like that. Um, and now the third file we'll go ahead and look at is actually in the React uh, folder. Uh, so you'll see this use hook.ts. So this is the React hook that actually exposes your library to the React uh, ecosystem for the front end devs to actually go ahead and consume. And again, uh, you'll just want to update the naming convention and stuff like that for this as well, uh, which I believe is also laid out uh, in the documentation for you right here. And now uh, we'll go ahead and look at um, the provider.tsx. So all this is doing is that uh, the, the Hyperverse modules uh, use um, the React context to, to expose a state to the child components. So this is the Hyperverse provider. And essentially this just gets wrapped uh, on the front end side, it gets wrapped uh, uh, to the entire application uh, when they are actually uh, building the DAP. Um, and then here, the index.ts, all this is doing is handling your import and exports for the JavaScript layer. Um, and yeah, so same with this index.ts, uh, handling your, your import and exports for the uh, JavaScript API layer. And now we can actually go ahead and look into uh, the UI layer, the UI harness. So if we go here, and we go ahead and click um, next. We'll go to step five and see the UI harness layer, uh, which again uses Storybook. Um, so let's go ahead and look at that. Um, so we'll see it right here, the introduction.stories.mdx. So this is uh, using Storybook. Um, and so if we go over here, we'll actually see an example right here, right? Example.stories.tsx, which contains the code for your UI harness. So this gives you an example of uh, what uh, to showcase, right? So here there's a button and you can see that it's showing um, the factory contract address. And so, um, for example, when I actually run uh, PNPMI uh, on this uh, uh, Seifu Builder Kit um, repo, you'll see that uh, we actually get uh, something like this. So you'll see a welcome page which explains uh, what this Builder Kit is, uh, about the builder kit, about storybook. You can actually visit you know, some of our documentation here. And then you'll see a component here, uh, which is a simple uh, connect wallet component. Um, and this actually uses uh, the UI from uh, Rainbow Kit. And so, um, yeah, wrong network. So you already know that it's like reading from uh, your wallet. You can change the network. Uh, you can change the wallet. You can do all that fun stuff. Um, and so, yeah. I believe those are all the five layers. We hit the UI harness, we hit the JavaScript API layer, we hit the um, uh, unit test layer and the smart contract layer. And now that is all the architecture that you would really need to know to actually go ahead and start building uh, DeFi applications with the SafeUX Builder Kit. So you have everything right here. 
and it's a clean slate for you so that you can actually build upon uh, the storybook and the uh, API layer. So yeah, that's about it. Thank you.